Spencer in the Much Music Studios, welcome. Hi. So this is the 13th year that you guys are uh, like making the music, noise, uh, yeah. whatever together. Lucky 13. How, how have you managed to stay together for 13 years? That's an awful long time without getting serious success headed your way. I don't know, I guess we feel like a big responsibility to our fans because so many of our fans are almost religious about us or something, so we feel like we're not allowed to quit, you know. They wouldn't let us, you know. We'd get in trouble if we did. It's, I think we're hopelessly unemployable doing something else, too, so we might as well keep doing this. Well, I was interviewing The Mission the other day, and they were telling me about, they have fans called Eskimos. That's the names of their fans. And they follow them from gig to gig to gig, and they actually fly in from Ameri from England and hang with them in America. I mean, they pay for it. The, the, the fans pay for this. And uh -huh. they, do you have um, anybody? Well, we like don't have that? anybody that flies from England to go to America, but when we're over in Europe, there, there are people from England that follow us all over Europe. And they'll, they'll, they usually show up just about showtime, just covered with, with dirt and everything. They ride freight trains and everything else to get there, you know. And say, oh, Spike won't be here tonight. He's in jail. He got arrested on the way, you know, and stuff. But he'll be there three nights from tonight. You and know, you know all these out. people? Do you know their names? And you, so, yeah, we get to know some of them. Some of them become tour. real good yeah. friends. They keep, we'll just see them every night. And come back every tour we do. You know. What is it about the cramps that, that instills such... I don't know, so well, we're a true rock and roll band, which is which is more than just a musical group. We we kind of uh, uh, stand for something. We represent our fans and uh, uh, say the things that we think they'd want us to say. And uh, like what? so it's uh, a little bit. We're like we're uh, um, you know diplomats in a foreign land or something. It's a foreign planet. You know. Now I understand that you guys are not too thrilled that rock and roll is turning so goody goody these days with let's save the environment and and I mean that. It's, it's not so much the voice of the youth, it's more like a voice of maybe establishment. Yeah. It's become respectable, and that's where the death of rock and roll is, in respectability. It should be music for misfits, it should be, um, it should be dangerous. I mean, I'm sure those causes are all good causes, but mm. that's not the place of rock and roll. It's the purpose of rock and roll is instant gratification. Yeah, it's like all these things, all these aid benefits and everything like that. It's like having having a knife fight for uh, for the good of humanity or something. It just it doesn't make sense. You know, mm -hmm. rock and roll is juvenile delinquent music. You know, or else it's not rock and roll. It's just pop music. When you say juvenile delinquent music, that's a good thing to bring up because can you ever get too old to make music for juvenile delinquents? No, I don't think so. <laughs> as long as you stay, I think rock and roll keeps you young. You know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, or it as long burns as you, you out. It, it's, it's, it's young in the mind, mm -hmm. I think. It, it, it doesn't matter how old you are. Why don't we take a video for those of us or them who are not familiar with the cramps. Okay, you know what to do? Go up to your TV set, turn it up really, really loud. Louder. And now, listen to this. This is the cramps on Much Music. Remember this. Everything that you have ever experienced in your entire life has brought you to this instant. All things now are possible in the limitless void of counter-actuality. All things, too, that are knowable will be realized in this new dimension of Bikini Girls with Machine Guns.
So, that's a crime. So when you look at a video like this, for an uninitiated person, they'll say, misogynistic, etc., etc. Yet, when you get down to understanding the band, you produce the record, right. and you're kind of having, you're making shtick with the whole thing. Mm. Uh, well, I wouldn't exactly no. say, uh, uh, I mean, we mean it, but there's humor in our music, you know. Uh, um, um. It's definitely not misogynistic. I mean, I'm in the band. I think some people consider it sexist to be dancing around like that. I consider it to be free. And I was especially glad to do that. There's so many videos where they have these, like, uh, bowling pin lineups of dancers doing this choreographed thing, and I'd rather just dance free. Mm -hmm. and, uh, a bikini girl with a machine gun is just a scary, powerful female image that's not misogynist. Yeah, that's very pro-woman, I Yeah, thought. I think so. <laughs> it's a frightening image, you know. Women do frighten men. There's nothing... Um, that's a powerful position to be in. You produced the record, so you were yeah. in charge of this one. Yeah. Um, so what did you do differently than the cramps as a whole have done as far as production? Well, she's always produced yeah. the records. We, it's we just always wrote the cramps on it because we're always in the studio and everything. But uh, so why this time did, did is it just your name on there? Well, it was more of a concept idea to say the cramps before, but it was me. It's just because I keep getting ignored. I mean, I wasn't even. I played all the bass on the last album too, and no one. Was They're so busy talking about how sexist it, they are, where they forgot. Yeah, <laughs> and, and where the true sexism is is ignoring the. Uh, um, output of a female, you know, what, what I've done, you know, by ignoring it, by saying that I play as, as uh, tough as a guy or something, that's really sexist crap. Mm -hmm. As if that is the ultimate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, as, instead of saying I play a, a unique feminine style, you know, that would be it. You know what's interesting is that I heard in the past, there's not a lot of female producers, very, very few, yeah. that women actually hear differently. Really? Yeah. I could believe that, but I, I, you know, I didn't know that that was a what do you, theory. How, how do you think they hear differently? What do you well, think I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, because I hadn't heard that theory, so I, I hadn't contemplated that. I think I they wonder. probably do everything differently, you know. I mean, it's a different animal for a man. You, you think physically or, or they psychologically? Actually hear. Or, well, I'm not quite sure, but yeah. they said that a lot of, there aren't a lot of female producers because women hear differently, and they'll say, do this, and the men will all go, what? And it's right for them and wrong for their ears. I wouldn't think that's the reason there aren't women producers. I think it's just that um, I'm fortunate to, to work with men who respect me, but there aren't many men who can, you know. And it, I mean, it, it's that cliche that where a man uh, is assertive and gets things done and a woman is a bitch or something. Mm. Yeah, I think the only reason there aren't women producers is the same reason there weren't women anything except housewives mm. until 20 years ago or something. Okay, I want to talk about something right now. Looked at your videos. We know your whole persona. We, I know that you're into a lot of the this just stuff all kinds of weird stuff yeah. what have you ever considered or thought about or i i, I could picture it so well a car a saturday morning cramps cartoon like Pee Wee herman or yeah. whatever sure i had thought of it but this, Pe well people have not? said that to us for years no i remember back in the early days when we first started out they said it should be a cartoon show on saturday morning a really a great sexy idea. horror cartoon yeah. modern day monsters yeah. or something yeah. like that what about movies? I mean, you, you do videos that are very B type, and you're yeah. you're into the whole movie thing. Why haven't you put together a, a full length movie? Well, we mainly wanted to be a rock and roll band for so long, and it's been hard for us to get a recording contract. Now we have one, so that being out of the way, now we can concentrate on something else, which is a movie. We'd like to make a 3D horror movie, ah. and uh, so that's our next project to, to do that. And it took you four years to get a record contract because you had problems with IRS records? Is that what the big, the big deal was? Oh, no. Uh, it, it took us... Well, this album's been done for a couple years. We just released, and it took a couple years to... Uh, we toured for a long time with our last album, and then uh, took a while to make this one. And ever since then, we've been waiting for the right uh, record company to come along. Yeah, I, I know that you were in a big lawsuit with IRS records, and just for your information, when we interviewed Miles um, Copeland a while back, uh, one of our on-air people threw out names of different artists on his label and they threw out the cramps. And you know what? This is right in the midst of the lawsuit. You know what he said about the band? What? He said, brilliant. I, I believe I, he's a big oh, yeah. fan of the cramps. Yeah. I mean, it was just... But someone being a fan doesn't mean that they're in a position to know what's best for us. <laughs> 
No, I believe he's, yeah, he, yeah, I think he's, he's always loved the crown. He's an interesting person. One last question that's intriguing me is if, if we can maybe get a shot of the legs up. Of, we, we have to make some legs serious up. fashion legs statements here. Tell I'll me about the pointer. Tell me the, point. the fashion philosophy of the cramps. Here are those um, shoes. Sharp, pointy, tall. Um, these are training shoes. He's, uh, we're training him to walk in higher heels. So he'll graduate to higher and higher ones. My uh, wheels fell off. Yeah. Ballet too. You shop at some very famous stores, though, don't you? Where, where do you where do you frequent? Famous stores? Yeah, like good, the best places to shop. They're you actually know pretty them, obscure. I, what are they? These are the tall girl shoe store, or he, because he's a tall girl. Um, yeah, it's usually just short men in there, but uh, it's called the tall girl shoe store. We like to buy clothes in a lot of bondage shops. And especially in England, there's a lot of great bondage shops. Yeah. Prefer rubber and plastic Skin in clothes, That's usually. Good. You're hilarious. Last night I heard that you sweated so much that you were emptying out the sweat from your shoes. Yeah, well, I wear black plastic clothes on stage, and boy, it's just like uh, those hot lights on it. This uh, little puddle behind. You do tend to you drain. <laughs> You're playing live tonight again at the concert hall. The show last night was very hot. If you want to go down, check them out. The Cramps live in Toronto. We well, thank you so much for dropping by here at the Nation's Museum.